$270 billion in zombie mortgages. Let's have a look. Good evening, everyone. Florian here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee, and let's have a look at this article, this time from the Financial Review, about the big four banks and the zombie mortgages that they're facing. Before we get into this, let me have a shot of this freshly made coffee. I've really developed a taste for cheap instant coffee. <laughs> I blame years and years of late night architectural work. So, big four banks, or the big four, face $270 billion of growing zombie mortgage risk. Ooh, zombie mortgage. Almost $270 billion of Australian home loans are at risk of defaulting or being classified as severely stressed in the next year as the borrowers b- uh, behind zombie mortgages struggle to keep up with their repayments. Okay, cool. $270 billion of Australian home loans. Now, what's the total number of Australian home loans? So let me look that up. Okay, I've done some digging and I found some data from September 21, which will give us a good indication of the cumulative value of Aussie home loans is $2.25 trillion. Now, here we have $270 billion at risk. So if we bring over my little Excel here... We can see we're looking at 12%. Let's move a few zero point. Yeah, about 12% of the total value of home loans are at risk of becoming zombie mortgages. So the COVID-19 mortgage boom may have come to haunt the major banks, warned Baron Joey banking analyst John Mott as loans written with when interest rates were at record lows become increasingly expensive to service as the employment outlook deteriorates and the cost of living bites. This follows 12 cash rate increases from the Reserve Bank over the past 13 months that have added about 20000 to annual repayments on a $750,000 loan. I mean, that's... Okay, a $750,000 loan is a big loan. And if we have a look here, the last... We'll open up the old Excel here. That's not what an average mortgage, uh, average first home buyer was getting or an average Australian mortgage. But probably what a lot of people who'd go into New South Wales would get. There's another article I want to look at about where they're giving away, giving away land pretty much in a town in the middle of nowhere in Queensland. And you've got to put a $750,000 home to, ju- to qualify for this 12 grand block of land. What, why would you put a house that expensive in the middle of nowhere? I don't, I don't understand. So, I mean, if we have a look here at the good old Excel, we can see first term buyers are 480, roughly. They're talking about New South Wales, 750 grand. This is the, the New South Wales, which is the scariest state to buy a house. I guess this is why people people are moving to other parts of the country, like Queensland, the awesome state. With mortgage rates now well through the serviceability buffers used during the pandemic boom, we believe many borrowers are entering a period of severe stress, Mr. Mote said. Well, weren't the buffers, they were designed to ensure there was buffer, so they're doing their job. Now people, are, I think they're going to have to make lifestyle changes. I, I honestly, I think a lot of the younger people that got into the housing market th- during the, let's say, the mania of the last few years, maybe they stretched themselves too far. They're going to do everything they can to keep their house. They're going to fight for it tooth and nail. You know, investors might be a different story. But I still think there's going to be a lot of people willing to snap those up with rents the way they are. As RBA Deputy Governor... Um, Michelle Bullock warned unemployment had to reach 4.5% in the next 18 months to tame persistently high inflation. Mr. Mote said Australia was likely to hit a technical recession, two straight quarters of economic contraction, and the jobless rate could stretch as high as 5% and create a wave of zombie mortgages. Does everyone, uh, everyone happy having a Labour government around again? The poor, poor Labour Party, every time they seem to get in, it just all goes to shits, doesn't it? So much of it, you know, is probably beyond their control. Oh. <laughs> oh, well. 
Let's just hope they don't make it worse, eh? New Zealand's economy slipped into recession this month. This will have a significant impact on many mortgages who borrowed their maximum, the bank analyst said. Many of these customers are likely to fall into delinquency as serviceability buffers have been exceeded, real wages have fallen, and additional work is likely to become harder to come by. Well, yeah, what was it? I think I saw a post on Twitter where a gentleman was talking to his Uber driver and his revenue had fallen because there are more people driving. Less people taking Uber. I think he's working for eight bucks an hour. Their big four banks wrote $267 billion in home loans over the 2020 to 2022 financial year to borrowers who took on debt more than six times their income. Now, is that household income or individual income? So a debt-to-income ratio of six times or more is considered risky by the prudential regulator. Bank shareholders say lenders may be able to withstand the fallout as borrowers are forced to tighten their belts on discretionary spending in restaurants or on travel in favor of repaying their home loans to stay in their home. As a bank investor, what I'm concerned about is loan losses, said Hugh Dive, Chief Investment Officer at Atlas Fund Management. This will be this will be very unpleasant for people involved with high DTI loans. But will uh, will this result in foreclosure sales by banks? That will impact on bad debts and bank profits. Given where house prices are, most borrowers are in positive equity. Are bank shareholders going to take a massive hit? Probably not. Still, other bank analysts point to rising levels of mortgage stress and suggest that credit losses are likely to move higher after an extraordinary period of ultra-low bad debts, while the RBA nailed the cash rate to the floor during the pandemic. UBS released a survey of mortgage borrowers earlier this month, which found that many were turning to interest-only loans to reduce repayments, and that fewer borrowers were still ahead on their repayments, as the rising cost of living ate into saving buffers created by COVID-19 stimulus payments. Further stress is likely to emerge over the next six months, with some mortgage borrowers already through the assessed interest rate serviceability buffers from the beginning of the cycle, said UBS analyst John Story. We think the potential, uh, the potential last few rate hikes could be a catalyst to drive the retail credit loss ratios back to longer term, if not higher, averages. Bank bosses are becoming more concerned that additional rate rises will start to crunch a growing number of their customers, especially those who borrowed to the hilt to get into the housing market near its peak. Rate rises from here have an exponential impact, Westpac CEO Peter King told a lunch with sell-side analysts earlier this month. Unemployment, overcommitment, and deleveraging will drive house prices lower. Most of the risk is with high DTI mortgages, especially where borrowers' circumstances have changed, Mr. King added. So a challenge for Lowe. The comments highlight the challenges for embattled RBA Governor Philip Lowe, who is desperate to reduce inflation and may decide to lift rates even further, though household indebtedness in Australia remains high by both historic and international standards. ANZ Chief Shane Elliott told investors last week that challenges in the housing market have recently been exacerbated by higher interest rates, particularly those with higher levels of debt, First-home buyers, those more exposed to cost-of-living challenges or who have less stable employment. AMP Chief Economist Shane Oliver said the risk of an Australian recession was now about 50%. He also flagged high debt servicing costs as a key risk for discretionary spending across the economy. Consumer spending is almost certain to start going backwards later this year and into next year as the 4% cash rate will push debt servicing costs into record territory as a sharehold of household income, Dr. Oliver said. But here's the thing, consumer spending is higher than before the pandemic. I think the, the previous trend before the, the mania, it would have been until 29, uh, 2029 until we reached the spending we have now. So go Aussie, go. So there's room to move there, but you're going to see that that'll hit the retail sector and discretionary spending. So, and people haven't done it yet. I think it's just showing you the class divide here in Australia. It's, uh, it's not the egalitarian society it once was. On the RBA's analysis, 15% of households with a variable rate mortgage 
which means about 1 million people will be cash flow negative by the year end at a 3.75% cash rate. And we are now well beyond this. In the first half of 22, about 28% of all mortgages were written in a range above six times debt to income before APRA forced banks to reduce this last year to pull back on excessive risk. The banks will have to deal with elevated levels of zombie mortgages, which are likely to be restructured to interest only or extend and pretend loans, Mr. Moat said, referring to bank to a bank response where the length of a loan can be extended in, in the hope a struggling borrower can get a better paying job. Yeah, why not? I mean, this is the thing. The banks don't want to kick people to the curb. They don't want to have to go through all the bullshit of of uh, selling property. That's not their business. Their business is just moving digital money around and managing risk. So if the you know if they have to cop some costs for a period and uh, hope people will turn it around, maybe they can. He expects bank profits will come under pressure with credit impairment charges rising to $7.7 billion next financial year. If the economy enters a recession, $3.6 billion higher than under the soft landing outcome the RBI is trying to engineer by lifting interest rates at the fastest rate in a generation. Under a more pessimistic scenario, the economy could suffer a hard landing, with unemployment surging to 5.5% to, uh, to 5 to 6%, and if rates stay higher for longer, credit impairment could then surge to $12.8 billion triggering house prices to double dip as forced sellers come to the market. This will put pressure on bank share prices and as investors fear cuts to dividends. Yeah, we'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to see, guys. Mr. Moat also lashed the banks for running internal models of expected losses that are overly optimistic, suggesting they don't pass the sniff test. All models are only as good as their assumptions, and banks have an incentive to provide a more optimistic view. He reckons there's now a 25% chance of a hard landing for the economy, a 60% chance there'll be a technical recession, and he ascribes just a 15% chance the RBA will pull off a soft landing. Okay. So, okay, we might have a recession. Let's, let's have a talk about this one, guys. We're looking at 12% of the mortgages in the country that may become zombie mortgages, now, is this going to re result in a flood of properties coming to the market? I don't think it will. Remember, demand is still going to be... Even if properties start going to the market, there's still demand for them. That's not going to disappear. It's just going to be a different type of people that get into the sector. We'll have to see, guys. What do you think? Is, do you suspect this is something to worry about? Are you concerned? Are you going to sell your bank shares? Or are you just going to wait it out? Personally, I'm going to wait it out. I'm not too worried. Anyway... Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one. Check out Heiser Bim or Heiser Does. And if you're a fan and enjoy the content I discuss here, you can support us on YouTube or Patreon. You can use our referral links, buy our pocket squares, or call us if you need an architect. And if you were asked in the previous video how it all works, I think with the Amazon link, you just click on it, and whatever stuff you buy, I get a commission for it, a few percentage points, a few dollars here and there. And it just adds up over the years. I wouldn't I wouldn't expect or ask people to do shopping they wouldn't do anyway. But if you're going to, this is a good way to support content creators. If you know other content creators that don't have these things, maybe suggest it to them. Hey, over the year, could pay for a month of internet, you know, a couple of weeks of swimming lessons for the kids. It's worth it. Anyway, guys, take care. Have a great day. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Hang on. There we go. In the next episode of Heiser Says. Bye for now.